your zippers up. I gave you a pant. Is your okay, zipper up? pant check. Yeah. Yep, we're good. <laughs> All right, guys. Film. Co show here at Mecca Elite FTS. This is, don't tell Juji, but this is my favorite gym. It's, it's always tied, but I think this one definitely has a little bit above it. If I could have any gym, this is the gym I would have. So we'll get to the gym tour video at some point. But here, no need for an introduction. We got Dave Tate, and Dave Tate's going to, I don't know, maybe fix, maybe destroy my squat. We'll, we'll mm -hmm. kind of figure it out. But kind of premise behind it is my squat's been something that I have trouble with. I'm kind of back and forth of wanting bigger legs, wanting a bigger squat. Do you need bigger legs to have a bigger squat? Does stance matter? All different things. And, and we're just going to have him kind of peel apart what I got going on, maybe uh, modify or optimize it a little bit because the next video you guys are going to watch is going to be a squat challenge video. So I figured I'd try to get as many pointers as possible and hopefully take the W on that challenge, but we'll see. So, thanks. All right, there's a, there's, there's a lot to unpack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there's a lot in what you just said. So, let's, let's, let's look for the low hanging fruit first. I'm just gonna have you do a few sets of squats with the bar, okay. just as you normally would, mm -hmm. and I'll just kind of watch what's going on. And then from there, we'll talk a little bit, kind of see what you're squatting for, mm -hmm. because for a beginner and intermediate, you have complementary goals, but for somebody that's uh, working up a little more advanced, they start to become mm. independent goals, mm -hmm. right? And it can make a big difference. It can be cycled, you know, to be able to be together, but to kind of be chasing both at the same time as its main thing would be would be making the assumption that the best exercise for legs development quad development is squats which a lot of people will say is true but there are a lot of legs created without squats and we know a whole lot of people that do a whole lot of squats that don't have big legs mm -hmm. either so it's obviously not everything yeah so if i just watch you squat maybe there's the small things that would be the same issues if somebody was close, medium, wide, high bar, low bar, or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Let's just see what those, if they're there, and then get rid of those first. Mm -hmm. For those that are listening, that would, I watch the, I, I look, when I teach, coach the squat, mm -hmm. I coach from the ground up. So okay. I coach from the feet up. So the bar may be a mess on your upper back. You may be falling forward. Your, your knees might be touching each other. I don't care about any of that. What I'm gonna watch is the feet then take it up from there. That seems to work better than other people will coach from the head down, like get the head position, get the bar position, make this is all positioned. But then as you go along and you keep working more and more and more sets, that doesn't address, sometimes the grounding or rooting of the foot and the bracing of the torso fixes all this. But going, your head position isn't gonna fix mm -hmm the rooting or grounding of the foot. Does that make sense? No, totally. Okay, so we'll just have you. Yeah. All right, let's go to the feet. Okay, we're back at the feet. We're starting here. Starting here. Just do a couple, you haven't done anything really to warm up, have you? No. All right, just do a couple sets. You don't need to film these. Just do like a couple sets of 10 or whatever, because it's going to look like horse shit for a minute. Your knees probably hurt. Everything feels yeah, yeah. Uh, like horse shit right Just now. Just kind of work that crap out. Okay, let's let's jump to some nicer sets now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are we back to pretty squats? We're back. So We're back squats. we wanted to kind of give you guys an overview of where I'm at right now. My goal is in a year to compete at OSG for Strongman in a 105 class. So in terms of goals, I got to get my legs strong, but strong for Strongman. So. I just wanted to tell Dave that as he kind of is dissecting things because I'm sure that can alter some of the advice that he's going to give to me personally uh, with the squat. So obviously take a lot of the beginner tips you guys are going to receive kind of like he said, working ground up, but then also know in the back of your mind, for me, I'm taking notes on how this can make me better as a strongman athlete. Yes, there's, there's different paths because when you say better for strongman, then you know, to me, it's, well, what lift in strongman is a squat, right? Where now there isn't a whole lot. And if it is, it, it's, you know, 90 degrees or above mm -hmm. medium stance, you know, lever mm -hmm. lift. If it's, and that hasn't been for a while. Yeah. That's normally not there. Normally in strongman, what you see is the squat is a stone lift, mm -hmm. which is a squat. So you see rounded back, low, close stance type squatting, but it can change, you know, 
implements change, you know, lists stopped. change. Yeah. I mean, they always change. So it, it's not so much the SWAT style that becomes in question. In my head, it, it's the squat. It's the strength obtained from the squat because you can take a squat with the strongest stance we can put you in. Doesn't matter if it's close, wide, whatever your strongest stance is, and build it stronger and then increase what's called your your absolute strength. So we just take your absolute strength up. With and any high school football player, any intermediate beginner, anytime you take their absolute strength up, all other qualities are gonna rise. It's mm -hmm. just, yep. you coach, you know that. Yep. At a certain point in time, if you get up past intermediate level, there starts to become some different correlations with that to where you can take absolute strength up, but it's not specific enough to have any correspondence. Mm -hmm. Or it's over or above the correspondence required for whatever that is for that sport. So that would be what's, what's an adequate squat, maximum absolute strength squat to be able to carry over into a stone or the things that you're talking about. And, and that's where my brain starts going with questions on you know stance width and all that other kind of stuff. And we'll break it down, I guess, as we go through it. Um, so I'm a little bit warmed up. So kind of what's the first thing you want me to start doing now? Right now, just they're gonna do another set, but okay. I want you to focus a little bit more on just ground contact with your feet. Okay. So go ahead and just do a set. I'll kind of talk you through what it is. I'm not too worried about your walkout and stuff like that because it is strongman. But once before you go down, see how you're still moving around now, mm -hmm. right? So go ahead and walk it back in again. Sorry. <laughs> Can't say it again. So this time when you walk it out, try to step, step, and then from here, make sure your feet are set. So you shouldn't need any, if you have to, to do it, do it. But this is the goal is to be able to get here. See that little, yeah, little shift, move, yeah. right? All those little tiny movements are coachable and trainable movements that we want to remove from okay. your squat and all exercises because in strongman, that could be a, a misstep, mm -hmm. you know, on a carry or a load. So all that stuff, it's all, this is what's transferable mm -hmm. in the coaching part, not so much the squat, but all those things. Yeah, for sure. All right, so go ahead and do a couple reps. Now as you're coming up through, keep going. All your force is being applied through the floor with your total foot. So when I talked earlier about going from the foot up, feet are not really that much of a problem. Do a couple more. <laughs> Knees are shifting forward really, really hard. Where, go ahead and rack it. Where I don't know if that's a problem if I don't. <laughs> I'm yay or nay on that because if it's a power lifter and it's that far forward, I'm not against knees going in front of the toes when you squat. What I'm against is long bar paths. Okay. So the further the knee goes in front of the toe, the longer right. that bar path becomes, right? Mm -hmm. And when power lifting, you also have to be able to get as much out of whatever gear you're using as you can. If it's sleeves, there's not a lot you're going to get out of it. So there's going to be more knee yep. uh, distance, usually about in line with the toe. Starts to go further than the toe, then I start wondering, is this is is the gain and the strength from that worth the extra inch or two it's my mm -hmm. add to the bar okay now uh, knee wraps midfoot full gear knee stacked over um ankle your strong man right so now i'm in this position that i don't really work with strong man so that position to where your knees are at the bottom looks close to me as where it would be if it was a stone stone yeah Okay, so I, I'm not concerned with it, mm -hmm. but if that's if we want to stay on that path of that specific development to carry over to the straw man things that mm -hmm. you're talking about. Now, if we're talking about trying to push that absolute strength of the squat higher, then I'm going to want you to get back a little bit more to pull in more hamstrings and okay. glutes. So it's not taking some of the quad away because we start to build up that, then overall that squat will get higher caveat it we're going away from specificity of the stone so you see where i'm saying yeah, here yeah. so you pull something out that may have specificity for a certain thing to replace it with another thing for a different quality mm -hmm. absolute strength what's going to replace the thing technically here for that right so if you were to go this way to try to push it up stronger by sitting back building the loose glue and the hamstring more technique work probably needs to go in for the stone or more ass to grass type squatting goblet squats or something like that mm -hmm. needs to go in to compensate for what pivoted now to pick you out back off what you're saying in terms of absolute strength uh do you think 
if I throw in, obviously we want to get the deadlift better, we got a deadlift, but mm -hmm. do you think there could be the transfer over of adjusting the squat to help with the absolute strength when it comes to the squat and the deadlift together? I think they play with each other. Okay, nicely, so yeah. that's, that was, that's <laughs> where I would say, I think I want to go more towards, because I think that'll be more beneficial for me mm -hmm. as an athlete. So knowing that, does that kind of change what you'd want to see out of the squat with me? Um, pull conventional, right? Yes. Um, it's kind of the same path. Okay. It's kind of the same thing. Um, because when you deadlift, you're, I, I doubt your knees are in the same position at the bottom of the pole than when they mm -hmm. are here, yep. right? So the deadlift would actually carry more specificity to what I'm talking about as far as building that strength okay. Okay. in the posterior chain more than what this would mm -hmm. here. So it's, it's an either or type yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. So it's, we'll keep working up and we'll just see mm -hmm. where, what happens as you start to put more load on. Mm -hmm. If we start to put more load on, then it could be advantageous to be able to build up the glutes and the hamstrings and it won't impact that. But that I won't see until we start getting a okay. little bit more weight on the bar. So let's throw cool. a plate yeah. on. Do you have any preference on if I'm doing high bar or low bar? Because I'll do both, I squat both. Like normally if I'm squatting twice a week, I try to do one as a high bar and one as uh, a low bar variation. And like, well, it's, is it gonna change what you're doing with your lower body mechanics would be my question. Because if all that's doing is changing where you're holding the bar, then it's just resting is or it's it's resting or stressing your shoulders more i would say when i low bar my knees don't travel do a low bar real quick yeah that is your low bar would be what i would say would be used to build that maximum strength that we're talking about okay that there so Okay, okay, go ahead and rack it. I see what's going on now. So you're training low and high bar now, currently. Yeah. Okay. So your low bar, I would say that's going to be that specificity type thing. Where that, you yeah, that's worry. kind of what I was asking. Okay. Yes, yeah. so that would be the one you're not going to worry about pushing super, super heavy. Okay. Right? And nor are you going to want to push that one super, super heavy because you're not going to be as strong at it. Gotcha. And, but you can increase the volume tremendously. So on that one, which say your max weight on it might be somewhere between three plates, four plates, somewhere in that mm -hmm. range. Um, if you just take uh, and, and split the jumps, instead of going plate, quarter, plate, quarter, plate, quarter, just went 20 pound jumps all the way up and you double the volume that's going into those, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna increase that specificity that we're talking about out of that bottom mm -hmm. with more volume, which will be easier to recover from because it's just more warm up sets, okay. right? Yeah. But it adds up once you start to get over the 50% range. That takes care of that without having to work, worry about pushing heavy loads. You can just push, you can weigh volume, mm -hmm. you know, with that. Mm -hmm. Where this, you could push heavier <laughs> loads and then just see how it correlates. Okay. What I think is gonna happen is when, the, when you, tell me now, when your low bar squat gets stronger, typically you're gonna see your higher bar squat get a little better too. It gets better, it gets better. Okay, the v vice versa, that's usually not gonna be the case. Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of reasons for that. It doesn't mean one's better than the other. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean one builds more than the other, but it validates what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That means this one here can be trained in a, more of a conditioning type of aspect. This one here can be trained more for load, which creates an easier structure to recover from. Gotcha. So let's stay with the low bar. Okay. Do that again here. Then I can go back and look at some of the, at the things. So the feet are good. So now the knees are back just a little bit more. And when you go to sit back, I can start to see the hamstrings starting to fire. So lower body wise, now you're starting to get tired. Now you're towards the end. Did you feel yourself start to slip forward on your? So a little bit forward. On your, yeah. Yes. As soon as you start to feel that, just rack it. Okay. Even if it's the warm ups, because if <laughs> to me, if it's a movement that you're trying to push you know, really focus on push absolute strength. Any rep that's done with suboptimal technique just took you in the wrong direction. Okay. You just see, you, you want to reinforce yeah. good reps, yeah, not bad. For sure. So that's where the rep counter doesn't mean anything. Okay. You know, it's just, okay, that's it. Stop. We'll go up, see from there. But lower body as I'm working up, the knee position is good where I, for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Powerlifting is going to be different. You know, I'm saying this because of the channel. They're going, what's going to be different with the powerlifter? We're sure. going to probably yep. sit back more. 
uh, because of the wraps. You know, you're not gonna, you, you don't have anything you're trying to get carryover mm -hmm. out of the bottom. You're trying to get carryover out of your hamstrings and calves. Yep. So the further I push you back, I'm taking that away, taking away yeah. from that carryover, yeah. which becomes a problem. So let's go up a quarter. Like, what I'm thinking is, you know, goal for me is being the best straw man I can be and what's going to be the best bang for my buck squatting wise. Um, and kind of, I mean, hopefully you guys are taking notes because I'm trying to take as many notes as I can in my brain right now because everything he's saying is making a lot of sense. Uh, you do have this video too, yeah. We have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking notes of my own video. That's how good this, this information is. Um, that's why we go to Dave. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're here. Father Dave, <laughs> blessing us right now. Uh, okay, cool. The other thing to keep in mind is we still haven't answered the question, is this going to have that dynamic correspondence that you're talking about? Yeah. And I don't know if we're going to have the answer to that question until you actually push the squat up. Trying, yeah. You know, once you push the squat up a little bit, even if it's 20, 25, 30 pounds, it should, <laughs> because you're detrained, it's going to come up to your normal pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times you're gonna get another bump after that, which will put you, it's gonna come up faster than you think. Mm -hmm. it, it should come up over the next few months that you're gonna know this has a correspondence, gotcha. right? So then that next question becomes, well then what becomes, <laughs> with the, the, the phrase no lifters ever wanna hear, what becomes too much? Mm -hmm. At what point do you, you know, let's say the 700 pound squat has that correspondence, but now like I want 850. Well, that's a lot of effort. That's a lot of recovery to be able to get that other 150. And will it have a positive impact? Yeah. But right now, all we need to find is will this. Will this right? And yeah. I, I do. I I believe so. I think it's okay. worth the risk yeah. to be able to find out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. So sticking to this, now I'm ready to start moving up into the upper torso, so the breathing and bracing and bar pat and all those other things, because all this other stuff is fine. Um, so we'll go up again. Now, what I need to know is when, when, you, when you stone lift, how important is your head position technique-wise? Uh, if you keep your head down, if let's say your head's down throughout the whole lift, at some point in time, do you have to pull your head up to be able to flip it? So when I, yeah, so if I'm going to mimic it right now, right, when I get to here, I'm going to be just like this, so kind of neutral. And then as I load, right, engaging the hamstrings, it, my head will come up on the extension okay. portion of the, the stone. So driving the head back is important yeah, to be yep. able to do that. Okay, now the same thing is true with any of the deadlifts that you guys do, even with the partial ones, your head determines where it's gonna go. What about the overhead throws, the bag throws? Uh, I'm looking for extension, so head is, is gonna be kind of doing the same exact thing. Okay, okay. the reason I'm asking is your head's, everything yeah. here is down. Okay. All right, so rather than just assume and tell you to start focusing more on a neutral head position, I want to find out, is this critical? You see what I'm saying? Like if mm -hmm. it's supposed to be done in the stone and these other things, yeah, yeah. which I didn't think so, but I don't know. So right. I'd rather just ask. I know yeah. with the overhead, your body, you know, any throws, your yeah. body's going to fall your head. Yeah. Same with the deadlift, but the stone, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do on, when we, let's go to a quarter on this one here, is I'm going to have your eyes start to position a little bit higher okay. to get the head. I don't want to say up or back. I just want back driven in. You're in the bottom of a squat, right? <laughs> Let's say here, say here's your head. So you're in the bottom of the squat and your head is neutral and you go to stand up, right? That's gonna happen. Right now, if your head is like this, what? Yeah, you're gonna start pinching you say, So yeah. maybe it comes this way, but then it actually works the crap out of the upper back. Yeah. Which is fine if that's what you're intentionally trying to do. But most of the time it comes here and then falls wow. here where simply all it needs to be is to drive, be yeah. driven back. Not, you know, this looking up and all this other stuff, mm -hmm. but um, we'll go. You were saying that you'd never considered. I never, yeah, this is why I'm here. Cause I never would have thought about that. And if we're trying to be the best, you know, dang strong man I can be like, this is the little stuff and these pointers and you know, <laughs> why are you going to it? Important. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very important. Matter. Well, plus you just told me that if your head's not in the right position when you go to throw something over your head, it's not going to go where it's you need to go. go. Yeah, exactly. So you just told me yeah, that yeah. head position yeah. matters. <laughs> I kind of know, know these things, but I need to realize them myself. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, this time we do the same thing, but you're going to look at the blue collar on okay. the bar. Okay, so we're looking there. Take your, push your neck back. There, keep it there. Now look at the, go from there. Oh, good, rack, all right. So, all right, so for you, it's not, the visual cue is not gonna work. Okay. Right, because that visual cue, your head stayed here. Yeah. Where we need this neutral head position, okay. so I need a different cue. Okay. Where, I don't know what I told you, I think I told you to bring your. Screw my neck back. Bring your neck back, so yeah. I'll stick with that. That there was, um, actually film this one from the side just do two reps okay you do one with your head in front and uh, then one with your head back well, a lot different yeah it's something i, I never noticed <laughs> kind of you know still be able to see his head in view mm -hmm. but i want you to be able to see what the bar path does okay all right so you're going to have to kind of maybe have, from a little bit from the front a little bit from the side so they can kind of watch this okay yeah that might work this and his head and it's kind of funny because you kind of called this early on i hope it's on camera where you said did you feel yourself leaning forward yes even at a light weight this has been something that yes now slaves see if we correct it what if it was happening because of the feet yeah and we corrected the head first so i would be doing this all day all long day to long. try to fix yeah, it because yeah. i started in the wrong place huh. you guys know what he's talking about over here. <laughs> it's like he's been doing it for some time okay so on this one just walk it out stick your head forward Actually, go forward a little bit more. So I'm actually going to film it from the front. I think. Okay, I'm... now just go down and do a wrap and come up. All right. So now I want you to drive your head back, neck back. Now you down, and then up there. Now rack. You should be able to see where his bar path is still pretty good. On one of them, the bar path was still pretty straight on both, but on one it kind of drifted forward. The other one, the other one, it went this way. Yeah. You know, so the bar actually was starting to go like it feels like it's going to fall off of your back. No, and it's interesting because I've <clears> had that happen before when it gets heavy. And that's not something that I ever would have thought to correct. Yes. You know, I, yes. I sit there th playing all day with other things or is it the way I'm holding the bar right now versus yes. where's my neck in relation to yes. the barbell? Yes. And there's a lot of cues that every, I, I like to, you know, Coaches all use different cues, mm -hmm. right? So they use different cues based upon who they're used to working with. So you're gonna cue people the way that you may train your high school kids. Well, then you'll go online, but you're naturally just gonna use those same cues because that's what's always worked. But then what happens is, you know, 20 years goes by, everybody's using different cues, and then they're all kind of having a, um, a battle over what's the right cue, what's the wrong mm -hmm. cue. But when you look at what everybody's actually doing at the end of the day, it's the same thing. It's just what worked for them. Sure. Why I'm saying this is some people you may hear them say when you're coming out of the bottom of the squat, act like you're trying to good morning and throw the mm -hmm. bar against that back wall mm -hmm. coming out of the bottom. Just trying to find a way to get that bar path straight. Yeah. You know, others are going to be pack the neck, pack the lats. You know, everything yeah. here is trying to put that body in the position for this to happen. Mm -hmm. Where with you, it was just this is simply. Yeah solving a lot of this other stuff without having to go through and uh -huh, do it. Yeah. Right. So I'm putting this out there again. So people don't think that they're going to see that you drove your head back that fixed it. So everybody needs to drive their head back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It may be, they need to brace better. They need to do their feet better. You know, a lot of the other things you're doing fairly well. Okay. So let's go up another quarter and see what's going on with the last. Okay, now where we're, I'm going to get into is just the breathing a little bit, sure. yeah. just to tighten that up a little bit. So it's going to be specific again okay. because of what this is. Yeah, yeah. You're breathing, and let me let me backtrack all this. Everybody breathes into their lungs. Right? Nobody can breathe into their lower back. Nobody can breathe into their stomach. They're just cues that people use. So it's that's for all the trolls. So there you go. I was going to say I knew this, but I didn't know we were rolling. Okay, yeah, yeah. Are you guys okay. out there trying yeah. to get me? Yeah, so, so now we're going to breathe into the. Because someone will say it. So. Of course, they're going to say it. So, but you're pulling here, which what that's doing is it's 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 lifting your chest, which changes the bar position a little bit, which is going to be okay. 
because you need to learn how to do that on your yoke walks and a lot of other things because you need to be able to breathe through the lungs bigger more so you can't always belly breathe mm -hmm. on the things that you do try to belly breathe on a stone tell me how that works yeah because you're trying to get your belly different the fuck out of the way you know what i'm saying <laughs> so yeah. you're trying or even the bottom of a deadlift sometimes yeah. it's really really hard to be able to do that but this one since it's going to be pushed absolutely for that max we want to try to get this more okay. tight so focus more on trying to breathe and focus more on not letting your chest rise so here you're ready to squat mm -hmm. you're in that braced tight position get your air but don't let this come up okay right so it's going to be pulling the air yeah, more right there right so let's focus on that see what happens okay. with that this time i'm also going to try to lock it down a little bit so make sure the feet are ground head air no stop your head came forwards relax ground feet head air go there you go bam perfect good that felt a lot, a lot better <laughs> so what we're trying to do now is to put together a mental checklist yeah yeah, yeah. what order are things going to fall right so i think we're going to try it again but we're going to try to go head i'm sorry feet head air but I may change it and go feet, air, head, head. right? Uh, I'm not, I have a feeling that that might be the better okay. route, okay. but that last one did look really, really good. Felt a lot better. With that. Yeah. So we'll try them both, see which one feels more natural. And then after we ground that, we'll go up one more time and okay. see. Yeah. I mean, this, this is, <laughs> it was night and day. You can just definitely tell. Uh, and here I am, been lifting for a fairly decent amount of time, but we're learning, uh, and then these little things make a big difference. All right, so feet, head, air. No. Okay, up. Oh, relax. Just reset. Okay, uh, feet, 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 feet. Grab, grab. There. Air. Head. There. Go. There it is. Okay. That felt better. That's gonna be what it's gonna be. Yeah, feet, head, air. For me, I don't know why, just because it's just me. Like the head check at the end for me is like, okay, we're good. Yeah, uh, yeah. It just makes that's sense. right. Everybody's gonna be different. Yeah. It's just the process is, you know, no, knowing what I'm looking for, right? So what I'm looking for, if it's a, if a lift that you want to get stronger, what's mm -hmm. the shortest, safest path to get it stronger? Yep. Obviously, a shorter bar path is gonna be a you know mm -hmm. the answer most of the time. That's what it's gonna be. Then what, what's wrong? Right. What, what are the weak points? What are cues to fix each one? You know, so starting from the fit position, working up, figuring out what cues are necessary and then ordering them to create a mental yeah. checklist. Yeah. And then from the mental checklist, that's something that, you know, we'll do again with me to be able to repeat. Because you can say it enough times you're going to start to hear it in your head, even without me being <laughs> yeah. here. Right. Well, the way the learning process works is over a period of time, you'll say it in your own head every single time every single time every single time and then over a period of time of doing that it's going to become mm -hmm. automatic right so that's called it's, it's called skill acquisition mm -hmm. now with that skill acquisition if this is if this was a competitive lift then we'll have to take it through different um uh, variations and coaching techniques because any skill that's learning the skill that's practicing the skill it's harnessing the skill perfecting and mastery of the skill becomes when you can do that skill under stress you know competitive mm -hmm. yep. right yep. Uh, under pressure you know mm -hmm. under extreme fatigue under max effort fatigue extreme load um under extreme fatigue of after 40 sets of doing something so what's what's probably going to happen in the future yeah yeah, yeah. well yeah so this is it's actually it's it is a it is a coaching thing that i i use for some of my train mm -hmm. your ass off people is we'll do this i'll get their cues i'll get their squats locked down and then we go through and we do all this other shit throughout mm -hmm. the rest of the day then at the end of the day i just destroy them kind of like the leg session that you came out with before just destroy them <laughs> to where they can't walk and then the last thing they'll do at the end of the tricep is a belt squat with just a couple of plates per side. But what that does is now they're, they're you've, you've been yeah, this, yeah, right? Been Your brain there, is a yeah. mess. Yeah. You can barely breathe, you can't focus. But now I have them in that position there and it's like, okay, now stop, focus, head, mm -hmm. air. You know, so now yep, I'm taking yep. that skill with those same cues at a later period of time and putting in a number of high degree of stress, a higher degree, 
and just yeah, trying to yeah. ingrain it all in one day, which you, nobody should have to do that, right? You do it over a period of time, but you understand what that process is, right? <laughs> so that's why you lock those in there. Sometimes The reason I'm stressing this so hard is sometimes people will get this mental checklist. They'll do it for a couple weeks. They'll think they're okay. Then they just get away from it. Well, then they go heavy mm -hmm. and everything falls apart. Or they try to do a, a challenge set and everything falls apart. It, it's interesting. I mean, this is a little bit of a side tangent, but I'm a, a, a neuroscience geek. And the fastest way to learn anything is under stress and pressure. And, yes. and you'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. So like hearing this stuff and doing what you do from a coaching perspective is just like, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Because then you understand like that that person will have it ingrained in their system because of the conditions they're under. Yes. And that's something I think is overlooked or not not looked at in training and programming yes. enough See, that's why yeah. i push so hard with with all you guys and all the talk that i'm doing is what's the end result here what, what, what's the mm -hmm. end goal here what's yeah. the end objective because everything should lead to that mm -hmm. like the foot position here on this closer stance how's that help the stone how does this help this help because then what when this in, when this happens you know you do that competition that's going to be the the prize is x of whatever you want are you 100 percent ready physically mentally and technically mm -hmm to be able to seize the day because yeah. just the fact, just, just if that day can happen mm -hmm. is already a, a huge mystery, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? It's not as easy just yeah, to get yeah. there as people think. No, I love it. It's you fascinating, know? but it's cool to see in practice of, of uh, like skill acquisition and training. You know, we have this stuff that happens in everyday life and we're trying to remember and that's neuroplasticity, but we're doing neuroplasticity with squatting and it sounds nerdy, but like it's the coolest thing ever because mm -hmm. that's how you, you get better and you never forget it. So feet, air, head, go. There it is. Good. Well, it feels good. It feels really smooth, like solid, which is a good feeling because I wasn't feeling that before this. <laughs> yes. So that's where that goes back to the first original question of what, why this to push up like the first one that we did the, the closer stance ass to grass type mm -hmm. thing <laughs> i don't think even no matter how hard we worked on that you would be able to have that type of neural tightness to be able to drive through to push it yeah. which is another reason why it's like okay that will be the technical beat and low end building and stuff like that this now i think the more that it's worked on the tighter it becomes this can now become something that you can throw six six and a half seven plates on here and not have to worry about breaking down mm -hmm. in bad ways, you know, yeah, throwing yeah. you forward and all that. You can actually get some solid triples, solid fives without a lot of technical breakdown. Yeah, and what I keep reiterating, but from the beginning, looking back, we saw it happen at such an early stage, and I'm just happy that we had done these little corrections because it just feels like so much more of a solid squat. Like when I, and I'm probably watching it too on video after I watch it. Probably just looks a lot better too from where oh, we started. Oh, way better. Yeah, yeah, way better. Like way before, better. like my knees were shifted so far forward, and my torso was super upright. But once again, where's the end goal we're trying to be? I think this is a much better place mm -hmm. than where we started. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So close this video out. Uh, the biggest thing you know I take away is always being willing to learn, uh, especially from guys like Dave, who everything he's saying to me is like the only way he can know this stuff is from years and years and years of training and coaching and the wisdom that is being bestowed is just always mind blowing. So I think overall, I left with some awesome cues and pointers for myself, things that I can use for coaching uh, athletes in the future. And like I said, the main goal here was to become a better athlete for my sport, which is gonna be strongman moving forward. So that's important for him to know as we're breaking this down and going through it. Uh, so I just wanna say thanks, man. No, really, it's great. Really uh, appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I know that what they're about to see on Juju's channel is going to be kind of everything we had just talked about, putting myself now in the proper conditions to make those neurological uh, patterns stay solid and probably take off a couple years of my life because it's going to be intense and miserable. But hey, that's why we're at Elite FTS, and I wouldn't ask for a better torture session than with Dave. So on that note, uh, right, no. on to the next thing. <laughs> Dave, uh, close them out, man. Where can they find you? Um, and uh, yeah, just plug yourself away. EliteFTS.com. We got a YouTube channel. Just go to the site. Make it easy that way. Everything you can find on the site. All so right. Well, thank, thank you, brother. I appreciate you. it. And here we go. Let the torture ensue.